Welcome to the Smart Wood Shop. Today I am going to make a shim jig for my table saw. But wait, I just made this and put up a video. In fact, I'll link to that video here. If you didn't see that video briefly, I'll tell you that this is simply a jig that will allow me to make shims, lots and lots of shims with a thick end and a narrow end both with the same sharp point on them that are nine inches long. The perfect shims for construction, for setting cabinets, hanging doors, all of those things. And what I like about them, about this particular uh, jig is that I use framing lumber, whether it's dug fir that we have around here or some of the spruce or pine that, any of the framing lumber, any two by, it doesn't matter if it's two by four, two by six, two by eight, the wider it is, the more shims you get out of it, but only nine inches long. So really this material is free. You can uh, save it from your own job sites, or you can probably run around to job sites and go through their scrap pile, ask permission, of course, and I'm sure they'll let you have it. In that video, Create Love Happy commented that he made his uh, jig out of, I believe he said it was material that was as thick as the uh, material he was cutting. So this base, I make it out of 18 mil ply, and it sounds like he made his out of inch and a half or maybe even uh, dimensional lumber. We're working with a table saw blade that is exposed, and it's up pretty high. It's up you know, just above the thickness of the material. And so I always use a push block so that my hands, I'm using two hands, but they are away from the blade, so as I push it through, then I'm able to slide it out of the way and then get the material and bring it back around, just like you saw me do a, a minute ago. And that way I keep my fingers away from the blade because the, even though this is a saw stop and I know I get a second chance with this one because the blade will stop instantly and fall down below, I still don't want to trip the saw. There was a way that it would hold itself down and be safe and hold the material um, and push it through, that's a pretty good idea. I don't know if it'll work, so today I'm going to make it with you. I'm Ron Polk, and this is the Smart Wood Shop. If you want to get a detailed set of plans to build a smart wood shop for yourself, one of the three Polk Smart Benches, or any of the accessories that work with the system, such as the router table and fence, the cradles that hold up table saws and benchtop tools, the smart crosscut, or the mobility base, again, that works with any of the benches. There is a link in the description of this video down below where you can go and purchase plans individually or in packages. And once you do that, you'll get an email, and in that email there'll be a link. You click on that link and you can go and download the plans instantaneously 24-7, 365. The first step is to uh, rip my material I need to make the base. In this case, I have uh, 18 millimeters, so it'll be 36. Won't quite be thick enough. I'll probably have to create a little bit of a shim. I lucked out and got it flushed up pretty good. I'm still gonna go over to the table saw and run all four edges through it just to clean up the glue and make sure everything is flushed up. This is where I do the layout for my two steps and my angle, but I'm gonna cheat here since I already have it and just scribe it on there. Dimensional lumber is about two millimeters thicker than my buildup. I need to uh, come up with a strip on here that's about two millimeters thick. I 
permanent version, I won't have any screws in it at all. I showed you in another video, and I'll put a link to that right here, I made this jig up so that I can easily make these handles. I'm gonna set the height of the blade so it just scores into the hole down. In the first test, I like how it works. One modification I'm going to do is the hole down. I'm gonna shorten it up so that I can see where the material touches onto the step. So far, I like it. I'm able to cut the shims using one hand rather than pushing both hands through. And I'm also able to stand over to the side here in case there's any kind of uh, kickback or anything that'd be over here. I still need to be careful and always remember that this spinning blade, it's, it's not protected in this operation. And so when I'm reaching over, I want to uh, be very aware of that blade and where it's at and keeping my hands a long way away. Don't, don't want to get distracted. You know, anytime you're working with a table saw, you want to practice safety. And that safety is, is being conscious of that spinning blade because it, it doesn't give you second chances. That is, unless, of course, you've got a saw stop. A great idea provided by you, the Smart Woodshop family. Takes the shim jig, which was already great, and makes it maybe a little more efficient, but certainly a little safer. If you enjoyed this video, if you've learned anything, then be sure to take a second and hit that thumbs up button. It helps drive the algorithm at YouTube so more people will see this channel, which helps support the channel so that I can make more of these videos. Thanks for dropping into the Smart Wood Shop. You stay safe and get out there and make some sawdust. Good job, you stuck around to the end of the video, so you get a bonus. This is the next day, and I have finished up the shim jig and made a couple of adjustments to it, and it's, it's much better. First off, it looks really good. It's all glued together. There's no screws in it. I remade the piece that is the hold down. You remember before I had ripped a two millimeter piece to kind of shim it up. I eliminated that. So it's actually just the 18 millimeter on top of the buildup. And I'm finding that this is better because it will wedge or hold the material down. So you can see, I can't slide the material underneath it, but a slight lift and it goes underneath. And then as I push through, it holds it down. Yeah, it tips the jig a little bit, but it doesn't impact the cut at all. The other thing I did was the uh, back section here, I cut a window in it to see where the material uh, touches the stop for the thick or the thin shim. And then I shortened it on the top side, again, just so that I could see the material beginning and end. So a little easier to make. I didn't have to make that... Uh, two millimeter rip and it works better because it holds it all the way through. So let me show you how it works. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed the bonus.